now it's Thursday. It's amazing how that happens. And Malzy's still here. Um, that drink must be warm by now. Yep. Yep. Dregs. Uh, Malzy from the old Melbourne Horror Film Society. She's with us, Ben Glenn from the Good Movie Monday podcast. And we're going to do some lucky dip. Let's um, let's jump straight into it. Malzy goes first. Oh. Malzy goes first. <laughs> back to the a little podcast. Easter egg there for you, people. Or if, if what happened on the podcast is even allowed to go uh, on the podcast. Yeah, it'll be there. We'll have to see. <laughs> At close range. Great movie. It's Sean Penn and Crispin Glover and oh. um, Christopher Walken. It's a great oh. movie. Um, Got put out through on Blu-ray through Imprint, I think it was. Yeah. Why do I have a feeling though that there's a Harrison Ford movie called like, or like a like you know Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer like a oh, no that's, like that's a, what a, lies beneath that's like what lies beneath <laughs> um, yeah but no not not that I know one, what you mean is, that was a great movie yeah, but, yeah. Uh, like uh, but you know like a Random Hearts type one yeah well anyway our close range is fantastic one. it's cool. Mary Stuart Masterson as well oh, yeah. very teen thriller kind of movie from the 80s and it's got a great Madonna soundtrack oh, like wow. she was with Sean Penn at the time yeah, so she yeah. really volunteered her music and they use Ooh. um what's the song um if I live to tell yeah that I, one live to tell, no. live to tell. Yeah. No, it used to be my playground so, oh, stop. <laughs> so they use the song in the movie but then they take the 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 melody from it and make that the score so yeah, right. Madonna's right to the movie. Yeah, cool. Uh, and Crispin Glove has probably never been better. I Walken. Think. Walken is the dad. Walken. It's and the so great... F- oh. and I won't rattle on too much about it because we've got to move on. But the famous story from this one is the scene with the confrontation between Sean Penn and Christopher Walken in the kitchen. And Sean Penn pulls a gun on him, right? And Christopher Walken's famous for hating firearms. He hates them with a passion, right? right? Yeah. He, he, he rallies against them in every way yeah, he can. Yeah. So in movies, he always makes sure that there's, prof- you know... Yeah provisions there to make sure it's safe but when he had his back turned Sean Penn pulled a real gun out it wasn't the prop gun right and pointed at Christopher Walken so the fear in his face in that scene is actually him you know when you go numb from fear he does that on camera and it's glorious I mean it's a cunt thing to do wow right but the effect was there wow yeah so anyway great scene at close range and directed by James, not James Gray, who the guy that did the sequels to um, Fifty Shades. Yeah, right. Penelope yeah. Spheres. No. <laughs> but he did a series of really good movies Where before he hit that, and he did an interview about the Fifty Shades movie, saying it's just that's a paycheck, like you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, James it's, Foley. James them, Foley. So. That's it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, Ben. Oh me. Yeah. Me me. <laughs> In the name of the Father. Which we've talked about on the show. I'd rather talk about skip. In the Name of the Rose. Okay, well, you can skip that one. We had um, Jim Sheridan as a guest, as a guest interview on the, on the show, so we did talk about that. I actually, I do, I keep meaning to go back and watch this. I don't have the imprint Blu ray, but it, I think it's on Stan or Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Because um, uh, I haven't seen it for years, but every now and then, I guess because uh, Google is always listening, uh, <laughs> on my YouTube. Like the random videos that come up when you just load up the YouTube homepage, yep. there's always the scene where Emma Thompson is like reveal, you know, revealing the police corruption that kind of led to his imprisonment. There's yep. that scene. Yeah. Kind of, so keep watching it. Go, well, it's kind of like the magic bullet scene from JFK. Like it's that pivotal you know, court scene no, moment or whatever. Pivotal moment in JFK is when Tommy Lee Jones paints himself gold. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's uh, you're like this. Where did the fuck did this come from? Uh, and Tommy Lee Jones is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pass it over? I'll dive in. Oh, did you want to talk about a different one? No, I was going to talk about In the Name of the Rose. Well, you but can for a second. I mean, that's got Christian Bale's took us in it. It does. He's he has ama- sex he's on a, the steps, a, doesn't he? It's like a castle. Uh, well, he's in the kitchen with because oh. he has sex with the mat with the kitchen ha- kitchen girl. Yeah, it's pretty raunchy too. It's uh, it well, it it pretty much kind of made him famous. What I love about that movie though is that the whole point of the movie is that because he and uh, he's like the acolyte of Sean Connery. Yeah. And they've gone to this castle in the middle of fucking nowhere to discuss whether, and they're, they're Franciscan. It's a murder mystery, fries. though, isn't it? Like it's it becomes that. Yeah. But the whole point of it is that they're 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 Franciscan French Franciscan friars, and the church are all meeting to discuss whether or not Saint Francis is actually a saint. Yeah. And if he's not a saint, they massacre all the monks <laughs> who believe and all the priests that believe he is a saint. Yeah. Like, because this church is so totally fucked up. 
and then whether there's someone else gets killed and they get Sean Connery uh, to investigate. Who is, who is not Zeffirelli? It's, it's a director like that. It's been... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's an Italian who, director, who, uh, I think. Who... It's okay. Benicio, someone, I don't know. You can look that up. And I've already plucked one out, so I'm going to reveal that. It is Diana Dawes. No. <laughs> Why did she come up? Jean-Jacques Anard. Anard. That's a Anard. French. Anard. French. I was way off. Jean-Jacques. I pulled out Being There. Jean-Jacques. Being, Being there. there. What a fucking awesome movie it's, that is. It's fantastic. This is Peter Salas' final film. Um, Shirley MacLaine. And he's like a, he's just a simple man with simple wisdom. that, uh, And he gets the ear of the president. And once again... Directed by an icon, and I've lost his name. The guy that did he do Harold and Maud? Um, oh, is it um, fuck. Not Town Robert Town? No, no, he, no, no. no um, Looking up being there, but it's it's Peter Sellers' final film, and it's not that comical. Like he's not Peter Sellers as we know him. And he's not over the top. Yeah, well, he kind of is, but in a completely different way. Yeah, little, it's Hal Ashby. Hal Ashby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, who co who worked with Robert Town a bit. No, there you go. So. They're all, but they're both in Easy Riders, Raging Bull. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, it's been so long since I've watched the movie. I can't recall a lot of it. There's a little bit of magic realism think, in it. I think Indicator have bought it out on Blu-ray, which is definitely worth Great getting. Great poster. Great poster of that one. Yeah, that's what stuck out with me is the VHS of him just like, grab, like levitating over water, like, yeah. like Jesus. Yeah. And well, and that's the thing. He's like an idiot savant kind of yeah. kind of thing. He's but a he's, servant, he's just, isn't he? He's just so yeah. nice. I don't even know what he is. He's just like a simple, maybe he's the, I can't remember how he gets, how he starts mixing with them all. You know how there's that movie, um, Sherlock Hose's younger, smarter brother. He's like, he's like the brother from Anthony Hopkins in Remains of the Day. Like he's the, he's the the younger, dumber brother. (laughs) I mean, they they use that now. Like that, that Sherlock Holmes brother thing is in fucking every iteration of Sherlock Holmes. I know. But you know that movie... Even in the Enola Holmes. That movie was the first companion movie to Young Frankenstein. It was Gene Wilder's companion movie. Yeah, right. Which if you watch them once again, and Marty Feldman's in that, and the whole Mel Brooks alumni are in there. That's a very, very funny movie, particularly the dance sequence. Anyway. Pacific Rim. Nice. You could tie that into the show that we recorded for Monday with the way it went with our drunken, you know... Yeah, white ons and yeah. Was that, <laughs> how, right. how? How? <laughs> was that off the mic? <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? What are you talking about? Who why was it? Was now? was the white on conversation on the mic or off <laughs> yeah. the mic? I don't remember. It's Pacific Rim. Uh, okay. Oh, we were talking about short bus, and that had yeah. a lot of rim. A lot of Pacific rims. <laughs> I don't know. Clearly, the whiskey hasn't quite worn off yet. No. <laughs> All right. So I, I retract that. Forget I said it. Um, I, just, I did not enjoy this film. I enjoyed part two more. And know. most people didn't like part two at all. I don't all. think I've even seen part two. I think part two kind of just took a... I found that one a bit wanky and just pretentious. I don't know. I just didn't like it. But number two kind of was tongue in cheek. I just don't... I've never like. I don't like any of those big special effects movies where there's 20 minutes of fight. Of a fight yeah. scene, and, like and transformers, when it's kaiju and, and you know, and it, yeah, and like there's, like who do you root for? Like it's like a Godzilla when Godzilla fights Mothra yeah. or any of that. You're like, who's the good guy I here? Can't give, like whoever you feel sorry for. I need it to be people. Well, the um, they're trying to bring this one into the monster verse with um Godzilla. Well, because why not? If yeah, you know, if they're all if they're all failing, yeah, what's the uh, what's the what's the key to making them better? Just combine them. Of course, don't forget you've got the Asylum's fantastic Atlanta rim. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Atlantic Rim that's a, that's, a, that's a doozy it's like the, the Dead Sea Rim I mean that's <laughs> the Pacific Rim like that's the Mediterranean the, Rim that is the perfect they didn't have to think that's hard in that meeting rim, right though. that brainstorm was like how do we rip off Pacific Rim like Atlantic yeah. Rim is like perfect the Indian Ocean Rim <laughs> <laughs> these are actual legitimate sex moves the, from the, the, ba- the Bass Strait Rim <laughs> uh, are we doing another one yeah why not yeah. 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 is that one if the um, if the if the camera decides to cut it, as Moses that's the Jones. Wow! Have you ever blow dried your hair with a fart? <laughs> <laughs> what a great animated movie! Oh, half animated. It's got Bill Murray in live action. And, that's right. Um, because it's a Farrelly Brothers movie too. Because and it's like a what's that uh, Raquel Welsh movie where they go in? It's like in a space, but oh, final, Fantastic Voyage. Fantastic Voyage yep. where they. 
it, they go inside the body. Yeah, and that's what Inner Space was a remake of, essentially. Yeah. And yeah, but this is an animated movie. I would liken it to that episode of Futurama where he eats the, the truck stop sandwich and gets like a whole like bio yeah. thing going on in his... Um, a whole city. A whole city growing inside him in his gut. Yeah. But yeah, so it's essentially, it takes place inside one guy's body, Bill Murray's body. Yeah. And when you're inside his body, it's animated and Chris Rock plays Osmosis and he lives in the ass. And the bro- the body's broken up into classes. So if you're up mm-hmm. here, you're at high upper class and, you know, and being in the ass, he's lower wow. class. And But it's funny and he's trying to work his way to the top, which upsets Bill Murray's stomach, right? As he's yeah. trying to get up. Like, it's funny. And We've it is the Farrelly brothers, though. right? It's... Two of their underrated ones. So this one flew under the radar, but Say It Ain't So as well, which they didn't direct, but they wrote and produced. The, the, there, was, there are scenes in Say It Ain't So that were so funny <laughs> that I thought I was going to puke. I was laughing so much. They are legends. And see, they're, they're another example of filmmakers that cannot pull off their brand of comedy anymore. It's just they cannot do it. No. It's just not appropriate anymore. Yeah. It's appropriate to me, but not to yeah. anyone else, which is a shame. Uh, so there you go. I mean, do you want to tempt one more? Or well, I think you... I think you've still got one. Oh, okay. You've still got your yeah, last we'll, one. We'll actually officially do one more, and then we'll wrap it up. Yep. Unless you just want to keep going, which I don't. <laughs> We've run out of whiskey, so why would we yeah. want to? Dark City. Mm, we've talked about that ad nauseum. Let's pull another one out because we had Alex Proyas on the show and spoke about that and his little sequel short. This is a Ben one. I can tell. It's fat. Victory. How many times have we talked about victory, Ben? And how many times did you put that in there? Several. All right, fuck it. We're doing... hundred times. <laughs> it's funny. These have been in here for at least a year now, so we have Very spoken long. a lot of, about a lot of them on the show. I just end up... Rec- I just... Like, when I write them, my ones, I just look around on my DVD shelf, like, what's there? That's where I get the ideas of what to write. And then I end up talking about them on a show as soon as the theme fits. <laughs> yeah. That movie. yeah, because you just well, them. Yeah. Talking about Chris Rock, surely he's in a house party movie somewhere. Where I don't know if he's in a house party, but he's in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, where he's the director and the who's it, Jamie Kennedy? Yeah. Is it this no, that's right. He's the director. He goes, this makes House Party Two look like House Party. The no, House Party look like House Party Two. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. House Party, there's like five of them. Like I've got a collection of four of them, only to, only to realize they recently did a fifth one with Kid and Play playing like business executives with without their hair. Well, then what what is that film? That's right. And, and who are Kid and Play? If that's yeah. the case, do you remember I Kid and Play in the eighties? I wouldn't recognize Kid and Play without their two hair. African well, American kid. guys. Isn't it and, kid? They, they made a series. They like the American version of like um, who would you compare to? Like I'll say they're Chris like, Farley and Dave Spade. Like I was a, say they're, yeah, they're yeah. black beavers and butthead before yeah. beavers and butthead. But and they're not really. Them, they're not as disgusting. One of them had a really tall afro, yeah. like square. So their posters always had them front to back, like Abba yeah. style. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, House Party was the classic, and they did a few other ones as well. But House Party was really good. American, African American, like Animal House type of. I believe the term is urban. It's an urban, urban comedy. It's an urban comedy, all right. That's where we're going. According with that. to programming executives yeah. uh, mm-hmm. for uh, American television. I hate the fact I have to be careful. I shouldn't have to be. It's about two black guys that have house parties, and yeah. it's fucking funny, you know? It's Friday before Friday. Yeah, yeah. totally, yeah. totally is. Um, or at least Friday three before Friday three. Not I so like much Friday Friday one after two. next. I kind of like number three. I didn't like number two. Number three's got some re- classic. I can't remember number two, um, but I remember number Carl one. Carl Witherspoon I moments three. in number three, because he has that chicken joint. And he goes, "Tastes so good, make you want to slap your mama." Then he gets his mum, "Hey, your mama." <laughs> <laughs> good shit. It's a Christmas movie too, so it's getting close to oh, Christmas. Love that. Watch Friday after next. It's great, and um, that'll that'll do. That'll do. All right. Thanks for joining right. us until next month. And Ben, I'll see you next week. <laughs> You make it sound like you can't wait.